Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today, uh, I did back in January of uh, this year, 2017, but about a year ago, and I thought, heck, hmm, I wonder if I, if I had any little nuggets from back at that time that I videotaped, and uh, sure enough, I did. Now, you might recognize this composition, you might recognize this scene. If you follow this channel for any length of time, you go, hmm, that seems awfully familiar. Well, I have painted it as a golden sunset twice. Once as a three and a half by five and once as a seven by ten. And I also have used this motif uh, to create a moon scene, which was very popular. Not in my possession at the moment, it's at a gallery, but... Um, and let me think I might have even done it previous to that I believe actually the moon scene has no stream in it the stream is out of my imagination and uh, I think it really adds a lot but so you can tell uh, I think this is a, a really good composition in fact it's a perfect composition because it's got the weight over on the right side with a balance on the left side and then a counterbalance that's bringing you into the scene with the stream. This reminds me of the kind of composition that Francis Murphy would do a lot. And uh, also maybe George Ones to some degree. His, his compositions tend to be, uh, especially towards the, uh, the end of his life, uh, quite unconventional. But um, there's nothing unconventional about this composition. I think it's called a seesaw or something like that. You imagine you've got a small kid on one side and a big kid on the other. <laughs> you know, it's it's a very familiar type of composition. And I, I quite favor this sort of composition. I use it all the time. And um, the actual uh, scene itself, I took the photo. Uh, my wife and I went out uh, very, very, very early one morning. And... Um, just outside of town here you get into beautiful countryside and uh, this is one of these areas um, it was uh, the Sun definitely was even out the, it was very misty and um, just about ready for the Sun come out but I was very attracted to these trees with the rocks and uh, I only wish it was you know I had to use my tree grabber lens to get it bit because it was way up on a hill in um, someone on someone's land and uh, they just love them some electrical fences out here in New Zealand they are really fond of them and uh, well because I guess they don't want their cattle walking off that's the primary way that uh, money is made here in New Zealand is with cattle and with sheep and things like that you see actually up here in the north you see a lot more cattle than you see sheep but uh, Dairy, far dairy farming is huge here, beef farming huge here, and uh, you know, so anyway, uh, I, I really love the cultivated landscape, and I especially love this kind of scene. I wish I could have got up there and explored around those rocks and, and taken some other photos, but um, this painting also shows, you know, the great thing about the videotaping is it really shows you, uh, or shows me too, where my head's at at a certain point in time. Um, the changes in approach here, you can think I'm still getting some echoes of uh, painting heavily, uh, trying to paint more heavily. I I've gotten out of that sense because I find that it's too hard for me to control. I try though, I was trying to get a good, strong, a layer of paint down because oil paint will go more transparent over time. Um, also you can see I'm still painting on the burnt sienna at that point. It probably wasn't for about four maybe five months into the uh, 2017 that I started going uh, for the um, burnt umber um, which I'm still into big time and um, not not saying I won't ever paint on burnt sienna again. I really loved it. Ver burnt sienna is the best color I would have to say to balance out the landscape. All these reds, um, 
Well, is it, if it isn't really the best, you might say, then why are you painting on burnt umber? Well, because I'm just like that. I'm ornery, and I needed to change. And I'm still very much enjoying the burnt umber. I have to say the burnt umber is basically the color of very rich dirt. Rich reddish dirt. Uh, burnt sienna is really just a complementary to the greens. So they both work, but for different reasons. And they give you very different effects. And... Uh, uh, you know, if you're futzing around with this kind of thing, playing with it, I recommend you try try both. I, I I think the Burnt Sienna would be my recommendation to most painters starting out because uh, it's it's more forgiving. You know, you can leave a lot of that red, red peeking through. It, it, it definitely gives you a good vibration on your painting. Um, and it's a technique uh, that I picked up uh, using that burnt sienna. I picked it from good old Burge Harrison in his book, Landscape Painting, which is freely available online, by the way. If you hadn't read that book, go ahead and get it. It's also still in print on uh, Amazon. I've actually purchased a paper copy uh, to help me with the project I've been working on. And um, that's, that's great, too. That's a great book. It's actually based on a series of lectures that he did, and uh, he really is probably the only guy I know of that wrote very extensively about painting in a toneless way, and keep in mind that he didn't always paint in a toneless way. He, he lived uh, well into the 20th century, so um, he some of his stuff is, I don't really know how to term it, but a lot of it's tonalist and some of it's not and uh, maybe leaning towards American Impressionism who knows it's very hard to categorize art and it's, it's practically useless really um, but he talks a lot about tone he talks a lot about the innovation of painting on the uh, reds and um, <clears throat> he talks a lot about getting uh, refraction and vibration in, into your work and uh, <clears throat> pardon me Hmm, got a little frog in my throat here. It's a great book. Check it out. Go buy it if you don't have it. Anyway, getting kind of close to the end here. Um, I'll be back. And when I come back, uh, I'll be bringing another video with me. So until then, uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, happy Kwanzaa. Um, I hope you're having a great holiday season and a great end of the year. And... Uh, until I see you again, please take good care and stay out of trouble. <laughs>